Well, welcome to Everlasting Love. My name's Patricia King, and on today's program, we're going to be talking about the quantum world and how it influences our lives. We're going to be talking about the glory and the supernatural, and we have with us a special guest all the way from Australia, Phil Mason, author of the book Quantum Glory, The Science of Heaven Invading Earth. So it's so wonderful to have you with us today, Phil. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Yeah, well, we are um, so excited. I mean, this book, I mean, it's, it's, it's the topic of a lot of our team's conversation these days where, you know, there's all this talk about the quantum world, mm -hmm. quantum influence and effects, and the quantum understanding. And um, your forewords here were written by Bill Johnson and Roland Baker, and I know uh, both of them and Benny Johnson also are very interested in this subject and how it pertains to the supernatural. Mm -hmm. And so you've studied a long time on this. Can you share with us a little bit about the book, Quantum Glory, The Science of Heaven Invading Earth? Okay, well, I didn't know anything about quantum physics until about 2006. And my background, I've come out of a New Age background and I'm interacting with the New Age community all the time because we're taking big teams into New Age festivals. And so I take a keen interest in, in the New Age worldview and what the New Ages believe and because I've come out of that background. And so I realized that New Age people have a great interest in quantum physics. They're, they're just absolutely fascinated by it. And, uh, you know, first it was the rainbow, you know, then the crystal. Right. And now it's like quantum physics. There are just so many books that have been written by New Age authors on quantum physics. And I thought, well, this is my mountain, you know, that I want to take in our culture. And so I need to know about quantum physics. And so I started studying it in 2006. And I just got absolutely drawn in by the whole revelation of the quantum physical world. And it is a revelation because... You know, uh, David said in Psalm 19, the heavens declare the glory of the right. Lord, the earth proclaims his handiwork, um, night unto, day unto day out of speech, night unto night right. reveals knowledge. And, and I realized, wow, you know, nature is a revelation of mm -hmm. the glory of God. God's glory is in nature. And as I started to study the quantum physical world, I was going, wow, this is incredible. This is a revelation of the glory of God. And so I started exploring the whole subject of quantum physics and then it started to occur to me that every miracle that Jesus does is actually a quantum miracle because it's a miracle that's affecting matter and, you know, either dematerializing or, you know, right. materializing matter. And so every miracle is essentially a quantum miracle. So <laughs> for our viewers that don't even know what the word quantum is, can you explain what mm. is quantum? Okay, well, the best way to understand what quantum physics is is to uh, compare it to classical physics. Classical physics is the physics of the macroscopic world, the, the physics of the, the large, you know, gravity, uh, velocity, energy, light, like all that sort of stuff. the macro picture. Yeah, the big picture, galaxies, you know, mm -hmm. uh, or even just the physical scale that we're accom accustomed to. Right. Uh, but the quantum physical world, in contrast to the classical physical world, is the physics of the very, very small. So when you cross a certain threshold in scale, like if you go down in scale, you've got you know, for example, cells made up of molecules, molecules made up of atoms, atoms made up of subatomic particles. And so when you cross that threshold into the atomic world, anything lower in scale than, than an atom, so the subatomic world made up of all these, you know, uh, photon, uh, sorry, protons, neutrons, electrons, quarks, right. Um, they're all the subatomic um, constituents of the atom. Right. And that's the quantum world. And when you cross that threshold into the quantum world, suddenly all the rules of the game change completely. Like what we're accustomed to in, in the classical world, uh, it all becomes, uh, it's like entering another world within this world. But of course it is part of this world. Right. But it's just the absolutely small. And, uh, you know, micro, well, not even microscopic, it's like it's subatomic. It's like you never ever right? see any subatomic particles ever because they're that small. But, you know, when you cross that threshold, all the rules change and you move into this new dimension of the quantum physical world. Wow. And so a lot of what they've discovered that takes place on that subatomic level actually has manifestation in the natural that sometimes we're not even able to explain. So many of the things in the Bible, like, for example, we know that Jesus, you know, well, it looks like Jesus walked through walls. We know he walked on water. You know, we know that he got into a boat and then immediately was on the other side. And so 
uh, quantum physics can actually give some, some uh, reason for that, right? Well, the language of, of quantum physicists is the language of dematerialization, materialization, things popping into existence out of nothing, out of a, the invisible world. Mm -hmm. And so when you come to the scriptures and you're dealing with the supernatural breaking in to this material world, um, you, you see that Jesus, everywhere he went, he was healing the sick, he was, uh, you know, raising the dead, uh, giving, you know, just creating new eyeballs, for example. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're all miracles that, that are occurring from, from the foundation of the quantum world and up to, for example, uh, Bill Johnson's favourite miracle right. is a girl who went through a, a fire tunnel with right. a glass eyeball and came out the other end with a fully restored eyeball with all the optic nerves and everything fully rewired with a fully functional wow. eyeball. Now that is a phenomenal miracle. If you yeah. could see that at the subatomic level, we're talking about billions upon billions upon billions of, of atoms, subatomic particles, all joined together as molecules and creating cells. And then of all those, you know, um, all wired up so that the eyeball works. That is an incredible miracle and it really is a miracle at the quantum level because all miracles really have you know an explanation at the quantum level right so it's actually those particles are life-giving particles and directed by the voice of the lord or whatever mm -hmm. it is to mm -hmm. to bring forth the miracle like yeah. even faith itself can be a substance it says in the bible actually faith is a substance mm -hmm. of things hoped for so mm -hmm. it's, it's it's fascinating isn't mm -hmm. it it really has captured my interest, and wow. which led me to write the book. And I know you know a lot of people are buying the book, and I just get emails all the time, people saying, "Wow, I love this book because it explains." One of my one of my uh, goals was to actually explain the quantum physical world to the Christian community, so that we can get a handle on what quantum physics is. So we're not just sort of throwing the word around, but we can actually understand what the word means and what the quantum world is all about. You know, when you were talking about the miracle of the eyeball, I, I just want to share this testimony. It might, mm. you know, have some explanation that you could give or maybe not, but I was just reminded of a friend of mine who was over ministering in Africa, and um, their bus driver had a glass eye, you know, as a synthetic eye. And um, they didn't know it, though, at first. They said, oh, you know, you're having trouble seeing, you know, just in Jesus' name be healed. And then they looked and they realized, oh my gosh, you know, it's got a glass eye. Well, God did such a work on that that it remained synthetic. It remained synthetic, but they were able to see through it. Wow. So they had 100% sight through a synthetic eye. Wow. Figure that one. <laughs> <laughs> I can't figure that one out. <laughs> That's awesome. Anyways, one of the chapters in your book is called, um, is called uh, the... Uh, uh, glory cloud, the quantum world and the glory cloud. And so you talk about the miraculous. In fact, I really like, it says ministering out of the glory cloud, the ministry of the glory, and then you call it the matrix of the supernatural. Mm. And so um, in this uh, portion, you talk about the transfiguration. That Can you comment a little bit on that? Well, the term matrix is Latin and it means womb. And I believe that the glory realm is the womb, if you like, of the supernatural. That everything that happens on this earth that is supernatural flows out of the glory realm of heaven. And so it's about the interaction of the glory realm of heaven and the physical world. So that's why I use that term, the, the matrix of the supernatural. Uh, in, in relation to um, the Mount of Transfiguration, where Jesus was transfigured before the eyes of Peter, James and John, literally they saw the glory of the Lord just shining out of him because that's who he really was. And it's like he turned right. it down a little bit for our sake. But when they were, they were together on the mountain, they saw you know, the glory manifested so tangibly and so powerfully. And I think there's a real relationship between um, the, the glory realm manifesting and physical uh, transformation. Um, you know, it's like we, we sense spiritually the presence of the Lord. Right. The, the presence of the Lord is spiritually discerned, but the, the glory of the Lord actually crosses a threshold where it actually begins to manifest in the physical world. Uh, and so when the glory of God is being manifest, you're going to have physical healings. 
uh, you may have people who start getting hit in their body with that sensation of electricity or right. just amping out in the glory. So that's a physical impact. Uh, also, you know, the glory cloud appearing. I mean, I know that's starting to happen in a, in a number of places right. around the world right now. And I actually saw that myself right. with my own eyes up in, uh, up Reading, in Reading a yeah. couple of weeks ago. Um, you know, I was praying that it would happen, but it did. It didn't, wasn't as intense as some of the uh, stuff I've seen on video. Right. But I saw the glory cloud yeah, beginning to manifest. I've seen the glory manifest, cloud yeah. manifest here. And so, awesome. so it seems to me that, you know, um, there's that verse in Isaiah chapter 40, the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all flesh will see it together. And so w through Jesus' ministry, the glory of God went public. And it's not like God's wanting to conceal his glory. His will is to reveal his glory and Jesus did the perfect will of God and therefore the will of God was perfectly done in Jesus and the glory was massively poured out on the earth. And I believe it's God's heart to reveal his glory, Amen. to make it visible. And, and so I think we do cross this threshold where we move from presence, which is spiritually discerned, to the glory, which is actually starts to have a physical impact Right. upon the, the, the fabric of the universe, which is the material world. Right. And that's what we want to talk more about after the break, is that we've got the invisible world, the material world, and how those, those, um, those interact yeah. and interface, mm -hmm. and, and how this whole quantum equation works with it all. So we'll be right back, right after this message. Phil Mason's book, Quantum Glory, reveals the realm of unseen subatomic particles, scientific evidence of biblical truth. Call 866-980-5464 or visit us at xpministries.com. Become a Breaker Team partner today for a generous commitment of $30 a month or more. Go online to xpministries.com. God, the creator of the universe, desires relationship with you. He wants you to experience Him. Join Patricia King and the XP team this coming Sunday for Experience. Experience is a powerful and impacting night of worship and the Word in an atmosphere charged with the presence of the Lord. Patricia hosts Experience events on the second Sunday of every month. Bring a friend or two with you and we'll see you there. For more information, go to xpministries.com. And so, Lord, I release your glory on my new friend. Are you called to media? XP Media's training team is available to teach you every phase of media production, from script writing to acting, editing, producing, and directing. For more information, visit xpmediatraining.com. Well, welcome back to this wonderful interview with Phil Mason. And this is exciting. And I know for many, it'll be a brand new topic for them, even though it's, it's certainly a big buzz in the Christian world today because God's releasing revelation of this subatomic world. And of course, the whole uh, field of science is interested in this and everything. But let's talk about uh, the non-local universe, because you mentioned mm -hmm. this in your book. And, and first of all, explain what it is, and then let's go from there on to mm -hmm. how it interacts with the material world. Okay. Well, uh, the quantum physical community are using this term, the non-local universe, and they're using the language of non-locality. And it's fairly easy to understand in the sense that it's uh, compared with locality. Now, everything in the physical world is locatable. You know, I know where my toothbrush is. Right. Uh, everything's locatable. My keys, my wallet. Uh, it, it, it has a physical location. Right. Non-local means 
it is not locatable in space. It doesn't have a geographical a location. Place. So to use the language of the non-local universe means <clears throat> there's a dimension of the universe that is not physical and in the quantum world they're recognizing that everything in the quantum world is actually non-local. It has this, these properties of non-locality. Uh, which means the best way to understand it is through uh, describing quantum entanglement. Quantum entanglement is the entanglement of quantum particles where they take one photon, for example, they put it through a beam splitter, they split it into two uh, photons, that one photon becomes two photons, they shoot those photons in different directions uh, at the speed of light, of course, because that's the speed that photons travel at. And they've done these experiments where with... with um, shooting those photons in different directions, they find that there is this entangled relationship in another dimension right. between those two photons. So that um, a photon has this uh, attribute called spin. Uh, and so it, it has either a left-hand spin or a right-hand spin. Every photon is spinning, apparently. And actually, that's the reason we use um, Polaroid glasses, because polaro polarized lenses actually cut out 50% of the photons and they're all the ones that spin in one, one particular direction. Just, wow. And that's what actually cuts out the glare with, with cool. polarised lenses. So because every photon has a spin, those two entangled photons both have a spin. If one is spinning left-handed, the other one will be spinning right-handed. Now what they do is they somehow, and I don't know how they do this, but they've done it in scientific experiments over and over again. They nudge one photon to reverse its spin. And they find that its entangled partner, no matter where it is in the universe, its spin will automatically flip and go the opposite way. And yeah, so they've done this again that. and again. Yeah. And now Einstein called this spooky action at a distance. And he was kind of unsettled by this because it mm -hmm. implied that, that there was another dimension to our universe mm -hmm. that did not make sense to the rational mind because right. you know Western rationalistic scientists have always been committed to a materialistic worldview and that is that the world is just matter. There is no right. spirit, there's just matter. Right. And what they've discovered through the discovery of this, uh, this thing called quantum entanglement is that these particles are, have a, they call it like a ghost link between the particles, no matter where they are. Theoretically, from one end to the universe, of the universe right. to the other, they will still have an instantaneous uh, okay. reaction yeah. upon the other, which means there is another dimension to the universe uh, that cannot be explained rationally, which is a real problem for Western rational scientists. Right. But they're, they're now accepting that non-locality is an attribute of the quantum physical world. Yeah, it's so <coughs> exciting. Dr. Eiko Horman was with us, and she was explaining also about different um, experiments they've done with that, and mm -hmm. that they could have the exact effect halfway around the world yeah. when done with one, the other would, would, yep. would respond identically, mm -hmm. uh, which is amazing. And we see this sometimes even with identical twins, for example, mm -hmm. sometimes that they'll take on... Um, identical things like buying the same clothes or, mm -hmm. you know, marrying the same kind of person or, yeah. or something. It's, yeah. it's very intriguing. Yeah. I, one thing that really interests me about the whole idea of entanglement is it's like a prophetic parable mm -hmm. of the fact that we are now entangled with Christ as new right. creations. And uh, we have this entangled relationship. He's in us. We're in him. And we are bilocational beings now. One of the features right. of the quantum physical world is this reality of being in two locations at one time because right. a quantum particle has this ability to be in two places at once. Yeah. And that's actually true for us like who are born of the spirit. Yes. We actually are bilocational and Jesus beings. Jesus was bilocated. He lived um, in bilocation. Yeah. So Taught us that too. <laughs> we're seated in heavenly yeah, places right. and yet we're in the earth at the same yeah. time. The son of man who is in heaven. Yeah. He said that when he was walking and on the earth. I think that for um, us today as modern Christians, it's very difficult for us to understand the concept sometimes mm. of uh, multiple dimensions. Mm. You know, even in the Christian world, it's, 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 it's hard for people to grasp that. But actually, science has proven already that there's at least, what, four? Well, th there's a theory called string theory, which mm -hmm. will never, ever be able to be either proven or disproven mm -hmm. through scientific experiment because it's just so small. It's like right. they're talking about, you know, infinitesimally small little strings that make up all the subatomic particles. It's a theory, and it's been borne out mathematically, mm -hmm but will never be able to be empirically proven one way or the other. 
But for those strings to exist, they have to exist in other dimensions. So scientists are now right at home with the language of extra dimensionality and speaking about other dimensions. String theorists suggest that there are up to six other dimensions wow. enfolded within the four-dimensional time-space continuum that we live in, because mm -hmm. we, we live in you know, three spatial dimensions. Now, Einstein introduced the idea that time is the fourth dimension, so we now talk about a four-dimensional universe. So what are the four? There's time, well, there's space? Well, there's the three spatial dimensions, uh, and then the one dimension okay. of, of, time, of time, and the way time interacts with the spatial dimensions. And so uh, ever since Einstein, the theory of relativity, they've talked about the four-dimensional space-time continuum that we live in, and time being a dimension within space. Right. But now these other dimensions that scientists are talking about are allegedly dimensions enfolded within the four dimensions of space and time. Wow, and they're talking about possibly up to another six or seven dimensions enfolded. And now that they've borne all this out mathematically and, and, and the, the, the mathematical proofs uh, all hold good. You know, they, mm -hmm. they, they test the, the mathematical theories to see whether it's accurate. Mm -hmm. So mathematically there's, there's compelling evidence for string theory. But right. again, it's never going to be able to be proven right. or disproven. But a lot of people believe that, you know, that this world is actually at the, the, the most uh, fundamental level mm -hmm. is made up of little vibrating strings of wow. energy, which is quite exciting. Yeah, and it makes exciting. sense, you know, I mean, my, my mind can grasp that, you know. You know, with strings, the question is, what vibrates the strings? Exactly. Because none of the scientists or the string theorists even seem to touch that subject for those little strings, they keep on vibrating perpetually, thousands of years. And tell us about that, because you were sharing years. about that at dinner the other night. Oh, it's called the zero point field. Oh my gosh, um, that is zero amazing. Zero point means zero degrees Kelvin, where you take um, something, or matter down to the coldest level, it's actually uh, zero, zero degrees Kelvin, it's about minus 273 degrees Celsius. Celsius. <laughs> and when you remove all thermal energy out right. of a subatomic system, so there's no other energy that's, that's intruding right. into that system, those um, electrons are still spinning, moving, jiggling, vibrating, Amazing. and they continue to, the, the temperature of, of deep space is, is two degrees Kelvin. And so most of the matter in the universe exists at incredibly low temperatures. Even at the, that temperature of two degrees Kelvin and theoretically at absolute zero, which is zero degrees Kelvin, atoms don't stop jiggling and dancing. They just keep moving. Now, no one's ever answered the question, what actually energizes right. that? And so I'm fascinated by that because I think it's the voice of God right. um, speaking over the entire universe Ooh. that resonates with the, the whole subatomic world to keep right. the world energized in this state of this dance of, of, of energy. That's awesome. And in the mm. Psalms we see that about how the voice of God can, mm -hmm. can break forth. Yeah. You know, um, is there danger in, um, like, is it possible for someone to start manipulating the energy on that level and causing danger to the world? Because right now we see a lot of movies, for example, of, you know, superpowers out to destroy the world and that. Mm. And even a lot of, in this last couple of years, there's been these sounds and strange things that are happening in the world. And of course, there's all kinds of mm. speculation on what that might be. Mm. And some believe that there's experimentation on these levels mm. that is disrupting the flow of the material world. Do you have mm. any thoughts on that as we close? It's an interesting subject. Uh, I don't believe the powers of darkness have the ability to manipulate the subatomic world because if they, if they could, then they could affect some kind of catastrophic meltdown of the very fabric of the universe. Right. So I think God has somehow uh, made it impossible for the, for the powers of darkness to infiltrate that realm. I believe that the enemy can manipulate matter at, uh, down to a certain scale because there is evidence of other supernatural phenomena happening in the universe out of the occult realm. Uh, you know, we've got biblical miracles and then there's miracles that are mm -hmm. done that are done through occult power. Uh, so I don't believe the powers of darkness have the ability to manipulate the subatomic world. Fortunately, it's like, <laughs> <"Phew."> <laughs> because otherwise they the could melt everything down. He's got the whole world in his hands. But uh, look, the, the whole thing about quantum physics is it provides an explanation for the, the glory realm of heaven, which is a non-local dimension, right. to infiltrate 
this physical world. world that we're in, which therefore I believe provides an explanation for supernatural first cause, uh, you know, which contradicts you know, Western materialistic right. thinking right. because you know, my experience is you know, I'm, a, I'm a supernatural practitioner and I see the supernatural all the time. Everywhere I go, I see the supernatural. And so that's a given for me. Right. Now, when I studied quantum physics, I thought, wow, this is explaining how that right. non-local realm of heaven can invade earth and, and the Bible says miracles. that in the last days knowledge will increase yeah. and I feel like he's giving these insights to people in this hour mm -hmm. um, to help us understand his ways and to glorify him even mm -hmm. more well thank you so much for being with us Phil and your book quantum glory the science of heaven invading earth it's outstanding I um, I know that many people at the book table, when they ask me about this book, they say, is this an easy read? I'm going to be honest with you. For me, it was not an easy read because like every page is like, okay, what is that again? It's so deep, yeah. so rich, and so intriguing. Mm. Thank you so much for this awesome contribution. Thank God you. bless you. Become a Breaker Team partner today for a generous commitment of $30 a month or more. Go online to xpministries.com. God, the creator of the universe, desires relationship with you. He wants you to experience Him. Join Patricia King and the XP team this coming Sunday for Experience. Experience is a powerful and impacting night of worship and the Word in an atmosphere charged with the presence of the Lord. Patricia hosts Experience events on the second Sunday of every month. Bring a friend or two with you and we'll see you there. For more information, go to xpministries.com. I want to thank you so much for joining us on today's program. I know that there was exciting content in it. But I want you to remember this above anything else that you could ever wrap your head around is that God loves you with an everlasting love. He really, really does. Phil Mason's book, Quantum Glory, reveals the realm of unseen subatomic particles, scientific evidence of biblical truth. Call 866-980-5464 or visit us at xpministries.com.